Hello and welcome back to Super Data Science's custom chart tutorial series. This video is going to be part one of our sunburst tutorial. A sunburst chart is an outgrowth of a tree map. A tree map is a very familiar built-in chart type that's built in with Tableau. You have multiple dimensions and you start out at the highest level and it drills into the lower levels as you could walk down that dimension. So for this one we have region going to segment, product, and then brand, all sized and shown by sales. A sunburst takes that chart and makes it into a radial or a circular view. That's why this sunburst chart is actually also called a radial tree map at times. But for us, we're going to stick with sunburst at this point. And it's also worth mentioning that the man who was behind this technique is Bora Baran. He has a fantastic blog here, and we're going to be using some of his techniques as well as some modifications that we've made to try and make it a little bit easier for you. This is going to be part one of this tutorial because this involves a fair amount of data prep and we wanted to show that to you to give you an idea of how to go through it. And then part two will be actually putting the chart together. So if we come in and we look at our data right here, we've kept it a nice, small, easy data set to work with. It's just retail data from a store showing sales. We have region, we have the segment of that the sale was in, the product category of the sale, and if available, we have the brand. And then we have the individual sales amount that goes with that. So if you look at this row, we have our east region and the grocery segment and our product category of vegetables and the sales that happened with it. In our east region for technology, we actually have a little bit more information showing the brand of cell phones that were shown. Now, the trick with the sunburst data is you actually need to have your data look like so. If we go back and look at our chart, you'll notice that we have a ring or a circle for every single level that we're looking at. So right here we have our region, then we have our segment, then our product, and then our brand. And when we come back to our data, we actually need data on every single one of those levels. So here you'll see we have our east region, and we have the sales, and then we have what level they're on. Then we have our east region for grocery, east region for technology. If you sum up these two values, sorry, sum up these two values, come down here, you notice we have the 51,186 that we get at level one. So level twos sum up to level one, level threes sum up to level two, level fours to three, and so on and so forth. There are many ways that you can automate this data automate this preparation step. The best way would be some sort of method using a script, using R, using Python. You can even do it using custom SQL. But in this case, we're going to show a quick example that actually uses pivot tables for those of you who may not have access to those higher level technologies or more advanced coding skills. So if you come here and you say insert pivot table, come in, you drop in your columns, region, segment, product, category, brand, and then sales. Now we'll come in and we'll make this layout a little bit different. We'll show it in outline form, and then we're going to repeat all the items. You'll now see that we have the data that looks very similar to this, except we have something showing up that's a little bit different. We have this vegetables column that's showing up as blank. What's happening there is it's looking to our data, finding out there's no value there, but still filling in a blank. We actually don't need that, so we're going to go through and wrap up our data for any time that we see blank. Now I recognize that this is a bit of a manual process and really only works well on small data sets. But like I said, this is just an example to show you a way to get to the data if you don't have those more advanced tools. So once you've hidden all the blanks, you come down here, avoiding the grand total row, come down, copy your data, make a new sheet, and then paste values. See right here that our data is looking really good. We have we match the example sunburst data really well, except now we just need to come in and create this level field. The level really needs to just look here and say, okay, give me the last area that has a value. You could do this using a match formula, but we're just gonna use a series of ifs. So we'll do if not is blank. So is blank looks to the cell, returns true if it's blank, returns false if it isn't. So we, by looking at the not, it's going to tell us, it's gonna return a true when there actually is a value there. So if there is a value, we want it to say four because it'll be a level one, two, three, four. If not, we'll go and look at the next value. If not is blank, then we'll look to C2. We'll do three if there's a value there. If there isn't, then we'll do our last is blank, look to B2. If there's a value there, it's two. And then if there isn't a value there after that, we know it's gotta be in the first column, so it'll be one. It's so coming here, fill that down. We now have our level all the way down, one, two, three, and four, depending on where your sales are. And that we'll just call our sunburst data. And we will have everything set to connect Tableau 
We're not quite finished yet because we have some more manipulation to do inside of Tableau, but that covers the preparation from our sales data step to our Sunverse data. Now, going into Tableau, we're going to connect to data, and we're going to connect to our Excel file. And when we connect, we're going to go in and we're going to use the legacy connection. This is needed because we're going to use some custom SQL techniques. This option is not available for Mac users. It's also only available for PC users who have the appropriate driver. This is going to get a bit technical, I apologize, but the legacy connection uses a .jet connection, and that only exists in 32-bit systems for Microsoft Office. It's a, it is a driver that has to do with Microsoft Access. And so if you do have 32-bit system, you should be fine. If you don't, you can go to Microsoft's website and download the driver. Or you can use a different technique, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So if you connect with a legacy connection and have the proper drivers, you can come here, you have your data brought in, and what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to prepare it for some data densification. Data densification takes your data. We have 50 rows right now. It makes a copy of it and then basically doubles it and adds in a column, one with a value at your starting point and a value at your ending point. So to do that, using custom SQL, we'll copy this, say union all, and then paste. So if we just look at our results right there, all we've done effectively is just double the size of our data set. Now that we've doubled our data set, we need to add in one column that marks whether it came from the first copy or from the second copy, and then give that a value that will then be used in the data densification process. So we'll come here to our custom SQL query, edit it. For those who don't know SQL, you need to add a column between a comma between each of your columns. And then we'll call this one one. I think this is two pad. Another name for data densification is data padding. And so you'll see why it's named to pad in a little bit. And then for your second one, you do a comma and you'll say 203 as two pad. Hit OK. And you'll notice for the first copy of our data, we now have two pad, which says one. For the second copy, it now says 203. What data densification does is it goes into your data and it in effect creates rows that weren't there before. We'll walk through this technique more in the second video. But you need to have enough rows created by this process that you'll be able to draw smooth curves. For a circle, it has to be drawn many, many times. So 203 is a number that's been shown to be used that works well. Bora Moran was the one who came up with the 203. It really could be any number that we pick. But for this case, we're going to leave it from 1 to 203. Now that we have that set, if we come in and look at our data, we now have 100 rows. We have our brand, our product category, our region, our segment. We have what level everything's on. We have the number of sales associated with that level. And then we have our padding from 1 to 203. So now that we have that all set up, that is going to be the end of part one. That's all the data prep that's needed. We've gone in and done our preparation in Excel. We've done our preparation in Tableau. As a quick note, if you wanted to skip the custom SQL step, if you don't have the legacy connector, or if you'd rather do it in Excel, what you could do is just come in, copy your data, copy just the values, sorry, and then paste it at the bottom of your table, and then come back and add in that one, and then add in the 203. That's in effect what we did with the custom SQL. Just made that new column. This would have been called to pad. But instead, we did it using the custom SQL because that is a little bit less manual. And if you end up adding new rows to your data set, the custom SQL will comprehend that, and it will be a little bit more scalable in the long run. But anyway, so now we have our Sunburst data. We have our data ready to go here in Tableau. And we'll get set for part two, where we actually get to build the Sunburst chart. We'll see you in part two.